Stephanie, the coroner in Columbus, Ohio, now ordering an examination on the brain of Costa Kara George. He's that Ohio State football player whose body was found this weekend after he apparently committed suicide. As John Henry reports, his death is raising more questions about brain injuries in sports. Costa Kara George's brief life ended after he complained to family of repeated concussions on the field. This time, um, preliminary investigation is showing that he died from what appears to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We have recovered a firearm at the scene. Kara George is just the latest in a long line of players who've complained of life-altering head injuries after years of skull-crunching impacts. Junior Seau killed himself in 2012. The U.S. National Institutes of Health found he had suffered brain abnormalities associated with chronic head injuries. Kara George had told his family his latest concussion had left him confused. Sports injury experts say safety equipment may have led players to take greater risks. The days of the leather helmet in football, there were far fewer concussions. People weren't using their head as a weapon. And when you're not using your head as a weapon, you focus on technique and form and protecting yourself. Head injuries aren't just common in American football. Doctors say they are also prominent in lacrosse, hockey, rugby, and that global brand of football known here as soccer. And it's not just at the professional or collegiate level. Doctors say they are also finding head injuries in child athletes. Go, go! Oh, oh my up. gosh! <laughs> American football officials say they are making changes. The National Football League recently agreed to a settlement with former players that could exceed $675 million. The National Collegiate Athletic Association is spending $70 million to monitor athletes for brain trauma. John Hendren, Al Jazeera, Chicago. Here to talk more about this is Dr. Devi Nampia Parampel. She's an associate professor at the NYU School of Medicine. Dr. Devi, good morning. Nice we should say um, that when it comes to Kara George's death, it's not definitive that the concussions led to that. But what does medical evidence tell us about the links between concussion and suicide? So there are a couple things. I mean, first of all, when you have multiple concussions, you can have changes in the brain that take place. So there are two types of changes. Your brain can actually shrink, certain parts can become smaller and then other parts can become damaged so these types of things can cause symptoms that might lead to suicide now the way I usually try to explain brain injury to people there are two types so there's the direct injury like if you actually hit your head and then there's also sort of like an acceleration deceleration of like having your head swing back and forth so you might not even get hit but you could have a brain injury it's the same idea as having a rubber band that just stretches out and when it comes back, it looks normal, but it may not function quite the same way. The famous NFL star Dave Dewerson is the one I think of. He committed suicide. It was later found that he had CTE. What is the difference between multiple concussions and the diagnosis of CTE? So they're similar, they're related. So usually if someone has a concussion, you can't tell right away. I mean, you can tell if someone's been knocked unconscious or if they can't really remember what happened at the right. time that they were hit. Um, and then you can put those together and have multiple concussions. But CTE actually is when you look at the brain, let's say under a microscope, and you can tell that you've seen those changes that okay. take place. Are there any red flags when concussive symptoms veer into dangerous territory that could have been spotted? Exactly, so people could have head trauma and then get better you know a lot of times people have that like little kids can fall different things can happen but when you start seeing changes afterwards so changes in personality you know people being confused people having problems with their memory and also you see people usually they have headaches they have trouble with their sleep if you see any of these types of symptoms you have to wonder you know did that actually did that head injury cause a brain injury and is yeah. there something we can do Kara George's mom has come out and said he did suffer from concussions and bouts of yeah. confusion we know that the brain is malleable, right? So is recovery from brain injury possible? It is possible. So actually, luckily, most people actually get better if they have, you know, one quick brain injury or something that uh, is not long lasting. But at the same time, if you think about athletes, especially football players, actually even sports we don't always think about, like soccer, yeah. you know, you have multiple injuries and you have sometimes, you know, these two different types where you actually get hit, let's say hit with the ball or hit by another player, and also that acceleration, deceleration. So it's kind of the chronic trauma makes it harder for the brain to recover. Dr. Devi and MPM Parampel, thank you so much for your expertise oh, this morning. Dev